I'm Mark Callie and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Automating your mixing station. Why would you automate two containers that don't seem to do much more than just hold water? A couple things come to mind. Disaster avoidance, spousal happiness, and increased control over your system. All those things were enough to get me interested in and keep me automated in my mixing stations. Whenever I'm adding any automation to my system though, I always keep this point in mind. No matter how well a piece of equipment is designed or how low or high tech it is, adding it to your system comes with a price. The price of added complexity. The more complex your system becomes, the more pieces there are to understand, and the more pieces that could ultimately fail. Now don't get me wrong, I love tech and I love gear, just whenever I'm looking at adding automation to my tank, I'm always asking myself, is this piece going to make my life easier despite the complexity that it's adding to my life? Some mixing station automation is so simple, it adds zero complication to your life. Such as, a drained mixing station drip tray. Any water that flows to the drain in the drip tray automatically drains away thanks to gravity. Super simple and super useful. These are only useful after the disaster happens though, as until there is a sizable overflow, they don't do anything. While we're talking about drip trays to a floor drain, what about not needing a drip tray at all? While we're down here on the floor, you'll notice my mixing station doesn't have a floor drain. Why not? Because the floor underneath the fiberglass grating in my fish room is drained. If I overflow my mixing station, water flows through the fiberglass grating and then rolls over to the floor drain. Therefore, no drip tray is needed. I love my raisin drain floor. Moving up the complexity scale just a little bit are RODI shutoff float valves. These work by blocking the output water from the RODI unit when the float valve is raised by the rising water in the RODI container. These are very low tech and at a bare minimum, install this piece of automation on your mixing station. Next up, electronic shutoff valves connected to a timer. These will only let your RODI system make water for a certain amount of time. Note that if you need to make a lot of water, you'll have to reset the timer. An easier and more useful solution is to marry an electronic solenoid with a water level sensor. Once a water level sensor gets wet, the attached solenoid closes, stopping water to your RODI container. The RODI Flood Guardian, aka the Marriage Saver, is an inexpensive and simple solution that incorporates both of these pieces. Pro tip, pair an electronic solenoid with an electronic eye and an RODI shutoff valve. Here's a solution for those of you who fear tech, but want a layer of redundancy. If the shutoff valve fails, then the electronic eye gets wet and shuts off water flow, or vice versa. Both of these pieces are easy to install, and for $84.25, your RODI system gets automated and you give yourself some peace of mind. To put it another way, you can cover your for $84.25. Preview of coming attractions. For those of you that love tech, the next episode is all about higher tech solutions on automating your mixing station. Moving up the complexity scale another notch are smart standalone systems that turn on and off your RODI system based on several sensors in your RODI container. Tenzing makes a nice unit that utilizes two float sensors and a shutoff solenoid. Once a low sensor is out of the water, the solenoid automatically opens and refills your container until the high float sensor is tripped. It also has a built-in backup feature that kills the water flow to your RODI unit if the top float switch hasn't been tripped in a user-defined 12 or 24 hours. The Advanced Marine Barrel Tender also senses high-low water levels and acts as a shutoff for your RODI unit. This solution has more of a footprint and really only works for RODI containers with a flat lid. It can integrate with your Neptune Systems Apex or GHL Proflux for those of you with a controller. The barrel tender also lights up when it's refilling your RODI container, which is kind of jazzy. Up to this point, I've focused on automating the turning on and off of your RODI unit. There's a key part of your mixing station that is worth automating, especially if your tap water is above 200 TDS. That component is the RO membrane on your RODI unit. Automate your RO membrane. Well, more specifically, you're automating the flushing of your RO membrane. So when you don't use your RODI unit for a period of time, the junk in the RO membrane can seep out. But this is called TDS creep. Then when you turn on your RODI unit, that high TDS water gets sent straight to your DI bed. This exhausts your DI bed faster. So when you flush your RO membrane, that high TDS water goes down the drain instead of getting sent to your DI bed. 
You can manually flush your RO membrane, but this is an episode about mixing station automation, so that's not relevant. I didn't find an add-on to automatically flush your RO membrane without using a controller, so your RODI unit will have to have this feature built in like this ice cap unit. No more forgetting to close your manual flush valve and therefore wasting a bunch of water, as this unit takes care of the flushing for you. I'll also cover a high-end RODI unit in the next episode when I take you through a fully automated, high-tech mixing station I built for a client. Since all my tank builds utilize a tank controller, I have the tank controller monitor and control the mixing station. If I wasn't using a tank controller, I would at least have an RODI float switch on the mixing station, and I'd add on a layer of redundancy with a low-tech water control system. 